This episode of IBJJF TV is brought to you by Bull Terrier, Shock Doctor, and Defense Soap. You're watching IBJJF TV. Sponsored in part by the International Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Federation and BudoVideos.com. We're here at the picturesque City College in Harlem for the IBJJF New York International Open. With a sellout crowd of over 800 competitors, it's sure to be a great event. So let's go inside and check it out. Being the first institution in the United States to provide higher education publicly and for free, the City College of New York remains among the most diverse schools in America. With more than 90 languages spoken on campus, it was riveting on our first visit there to see so many contrasting characters communicate with just one, the language of jiu-jitsu, as the neo-gothic halls of New York's City College played host to the 2012 IBJJF New York Open. So Gregor, how's the tournament going today? Uh, it's going very well, you know, just started, but it's, uh, it's, the tournament's growing a lot. Every year it's bigger, it's more organized, you know. It's, uh, it's very nice and it's good to be in New York also, you know, or my state. I see you coaching your guys. Do you enjoy coaching? Yeah, I love co coaching. It's one of my favorite things, you know. I mean, I like fighting more than coaching, but it's, uh, I like being there, trying to help them out. Sometimes I get a little nervous for them, you know. I keep yelling, they're not doing it, but it's, I, I enjoy a lot and watch them grow in competition also, you know. Sometimes the kids start off young and then just become a professional athletes after. It's very nice. What are you trying to tell them when you're coaching? Uh, the, it depends. Each one got to tell one thing. Depends on the game plan. But especially the guys who are starting, you know, I tell them to warm up well, to keep calm. It's just like being in the gym. You know, it's losing and winning is part of the competition. It's important to go out there and, and compete well, you know. Not even lose or win. It's just compete well. You've competed for a long time. What's the biggest lesson you've learned from all these years of competition? Uh, the biggest lesson, I think, is just warming up. It's, I fought many times. Many times without warming up, you know, you feel like the five, first five minutes you're completely dead on the mat and you don't want to have that feeling. I think warming up is one of the most important things and staying calm, you know, trying to visualize the fight and focus. That's, I think that, that's uh, the, the main keys. Sounds good. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Brent. So, Wayne, how did your matches go today? Went pretty well today. Um, I had uh, four matches. I won the first three by submission and um, unfortunately lost in the uh, semifinals. But, you know, jiu-jitsu is a really tough sport and you, uh, you learn a lot from your losses. So I'm really looking forward to coming back Monday and working hard on them. So you came all the way from L.A. You trained at Cabrinhas in L.A. Why did you come all the way to New York for this tournament? Well, I have a really good friend, uh, Sinistro, out here that trains at the Alliance New York, and we came to just hang out with him and uh, test ourselves for the Worlds. We really want to get ready for Worlds. Cabrina is really preparing for us, and we're looking forward to as a team to really compete. You say competition is a learning experience. What did you learn today? I learned that you need to always be patient, not rush it, and really work on your, your flaws in training. You can't hide from anything in tournaments. It really exposes it. Definitely. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Ryan. So, Igor, how's the tournament going today? Uh, very nice, you know, it's like uh, it's good to have like a high level tournaments, you know, in the area, in the New York area. It's uh, very hard to uh, to come along with those tournaments, you know. And how's your team doing? Uh, they're doing good, you know, we come, we have a strong team. Uh, Hansel's Academy have over 60, uh, over almost 80 competitors. So they're doing good, you know, some win, some lose, you know. When you watch them, does it make you want to get out there and compete? Absolutely. Uh, but now we're focusing more on, on the MMA, me and my brothers, but you know, Jesus is still our lives. We still teach every day, we still train with the gi two, two hours a day, but uh, this is my hobby, you know. I, I uh, definitely am uh, not retired with the gi, I'm definitely getting back in there soon. What advice do you give your students before they compete? Just make sure, like, uh, make sure they uh, don't pressure the students more than they, they already pressure them, themselves, you know because they already push too much, pressures, uh, too much pressure on themselves. They get nervous, so make sure they're calm. They are well-trained. They train with, the, with, with, uh, with uh, a very good set of, uh, of, uh, of training partners, instructors, professors, so they're well-prepared. So they make, just make sure, make sure they get here, they're calm and they're ready, and they uh, just let it go, you know, let it all, all, all on the mat there. When you were younger, did you want to compete or were you pushed in the competition? No, never push, you know. Of course, you, when you train and you train well in the academy, you're training against uh, good top competitors. 
So, you know, why not? Why I shouldn't be in there, you know? So, just, just a, a natural way to go. And what can we expect to see from you in the future? Uh, for sure, some MMA fights uh, in July. All right, keep up the good work. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Igor. Holes, how are you enjoying the day today? Doing good, great competition so far, you know. I'm um, having lots of fun, you know, to see all the, the new talent over there. You coaching the guys from your team? Yeah, you know, we got a bunch of uh, the guys from Hensel's the school here. So, give, you know, my, co my cousin Neyman. So came to help him out a little bit, show a little support. And how is it having a local tournament like this from the IBJJF? It's awesome, you know. They've been, have, they've been doing, like, tournaments here for, let's say, three or four years now. They started with the no gi ms and it's awesome. I think it helped develop the, the jiu-jitsu in the area a lot. You know? And what's the main thing that you try to get across to your guys when you're coaching? Just try to, to, make, to make sure that they, they, they perform the way they perform in school, which is the hardest. Sometimes people feel a lot of pressure when they go inside the, inside the ring or on the mats, but it's the same thing. Just try to keep them calm, put their game plan into, into action. You're a long-time competitor. What's the main thing you've learned from competition? Well, it's most important thing you always like no matter who is across side from you always respect them you know always never underestimate anybody thank you very much All right, thank you this is your train station your canvas your metronome your cable bridge the steel threads of your past suspending the blueprints of your future courtroom bench, you pass sentences to all those that accept mediocrity. You traverse the road less traveled, every win a friendly hitchhiker, every loss an unwanted stowaway. Your country. Defend what you have built. The natural ingredients in defense soap proven effective against grappling related skin infections. Go to defensesoap.com to learn more. Fabio, how's Team Alliance doing today? Uh, today is fantastic. Yeah, I'm very proud of everybody. Yeah. People's doing great. No, brown bell, purple bell. We're gonna do so well on the blue. When the guys are less experienced, no, they they'll do better. No, it's a lot more motivation to train too. Any standouts today? Uh, yeah, I have seen my, my son did pretty well. So I don't know, I'm pretty proud. It was an emotional fight. Uh, special for me. It was more than just a final match for me. That was more. It was really good to see him win, and also Mateo Maldonado, the brown bell, has a good run, like three victories, three submissions. You know? and we have Nelson Puentes too, for, um, he's not for my gym, he's a student for one of my students, so uh, he's for my, my, my tree branch. You know? So um, I'm really proud of this guy today. You know? Seems to true, you know? did well. You mentioned watching your son. Which is, more, which is more difficult for you, competing by yourself or watching your son out there? Uh, it's, it's really intense, both, <laughs> both are good. Uh, I remember like in the Point America, no gi, like uh, we both fight at the same time and I got the guy back and he's got the guy back. We have a great smoke, like a snapshot for somebody and like, we both fight. It was, it, was, it was amazing that time too, man. Today was great seeing him win, you know, Purple Bell for the first time here, midweight. And it was emotional and very good, very good for us, for our team, yeah. very proud of him. How important is the IBGF New York International Open for you? Oh, it's really important, it's crucial for the business, it's crucial for everybody, for the sport, you know. And, and it's, uh, I keep, I, I'm, I'm very, very happy this happened here in New York and Boston, Chicago, all these major cities, you know. I think Carlinhos Grace is doing a great job spreading the war, uh, the Jiu Jitsu, you know, worldwide. And you're doing a great job with your school. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brown belt, open weight champion, and champion at your weight class. How's it feel? Man, no, thanks God. It, great today. Uh, I feel very, really, you know, uh, happy this time. You know, first time that I that I win my first my first in the waiting and absolute also, you know. So, you know, I always had that bittersweet, you know, flavor of winning weight and getting a second absolute or winning absolute getting a second weight. But this time, you know, uh, I felt that I got in every position perfect. You know, also move up weight and I'm feeling way better for absolute too. The question a lot of people are wondering about: any talk about your black belt? No talks about my black belt, you know. I think that I'm gonna be in the brown belt division for a, for a long time. It's just my first time as, as brown belt, so so Luzon Ecuador is the guy who decides that. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you at the Worlds, competing again. 
for sure, I'm gonna be there fighting, waiting absolute as always, you know. For me, Worlds is, you know, the, the biggest tournament of the year and that's my whole focus. I'm going tomorrow Sunday, train at the gym already and focusing at Worlds. This now never happened. Keep your eyes on this guy, Sinistro. Marcelo, you seem to be a very busy man today. Look, I almost losing my voice. You know? I, already, I already don't have the mini voice. I'm losing just a little bit that I have already. You have a big team here in the New York City area. How do you coach everybody? Look, I'm glad I still have two instructors that help me. So I'm all over, but also they help me to go into all the mess. And we can't miss that, that competition. I mean, we, we train in New York City. We have a school over here. If you have a tournament on this size and such a really well organized from the Confederation, we got we to prestige it. You know? You're always competing at some of the biggest tournaments around. How does it feel to have a, a local tournament like this? Look, even the biggest tournament, I have competed like uh, in my backyard. Like the first Abu Dhabi that I won, I won in Sao Paulo, where, where was the city I was living that time. So I just feel like normal to just walk in and come to the tournament, you know what I mean, from your house. That, that's, that is, feels really good. And which do you enjoy more, competing or coaching? I like, I like to compete a lot. But now I'm feeling good to come here and coach and see my students win, you know what I mean? So maybe now I've been enjoying more like coaching, you know, now, you know what I mean? But things change, you know what I mean? And how is your team doing today? It's doing good, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, only is going to win who come to compete, you know what I mean? Only is going to lose who come to compete. So if you, if you have time, if you put yourself like on, on that position to come compete, you know, everything could happen. But I'm glad most of it is doing really good, you know. Most is doing, it's just like a beginner and I'm, I'm finally get them to, to be able to do a competition that is really well organized. I don't want to experience their first competition in, a, in maybe a smaller tournament, but a tournament that is not organized. You know I mean, I've been experienced that a lot before, and it, I don't want that for my students. No, even if their first competition, I want they come to a really well organized tournament. You know? What's the main advice you give your students before they compete? I try to explain and make them feel. What I mean when I'm talking about like they gotta give everything, but at the same time they cannot give everything the day of the tournament. They gotta give everything every day in training. You know what I mean? And if you give everything the day of in, in the train, once you come over here, you're gonna have everything you need, you know, to win. You know? Thank you, Marcelo. Thank you, guys. Rafael, silver medalist in the lightweight division. Yes, sir. How'd your matches go today? Uh, I felt very good as I've been fighting lightweight. So I lost by three advantage, was four and four. Uh, and then I got one advantage. Felt very good, he, he did better, it's that kind of thing. I, I was trying to find that my the problem with me. I think the problem was just maybe more aggressive sometimes, in, right in the beginning. I think I let the mat to be more aggressive in the end, because I started behind with four points. And then I got a running back to the four points. So, oh, feeling good because I can't go, but I went, I wait too much for the end of the match to start to make reaction. Any special training going to this competition? Uh, yeah, I went by to Lucas because he was about to fight World Pro. So I was training with him for a few days. Uh, and then now I'm going to train with Gabriel for one week, Gabriel Goulart. Next week now he's going to be in Greenville with me for one week. And then after that I'm going to try uh, to go train with Cobrin for the words. What's the next competition for you? Spring Open. <laughs> I'll be there for sure. Spring Open and the Worlds. Yes, and the Worlds. Nice. Keep up the good work. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. As the IBJJF planned, the New York Open brought out a lot of top talent from the Northeast. Daniel Belesa in the Blue Gi has been teaching in York, Pennsylvania since 2008 and his opponent, Enrique Hesenji, teaches classes at the world-famous Marcelo Garcia Academy in New York City. Hesenji finds himself in Belesa's closed guard and begins a standing pass, but Belesa quickly sweeps and gets the full mount all at once. The match continues with Hesenji looking for an exit from the closed guard. After a similar standing pass attempt, Hesenji almost finds himself a victim of an omoplata. Beleza ends up winning on points and earns the gold in the light featherweight division. 
At just a minute into this match, San Diego's Clark Gracie in the Blue Gi turns this sweep attempt against Ken Promola into an Omoplata setup. Promola does a valiant job of staving off the submission by standing, but Gracie's patient endurance during the attack eventually wears Promola down, and Clark is able to turn the attack into a crucifix variant that ends it in just under two and a half minutes. Prepare yourselves for a case of deja vu. In this semifinals match, Clark Gracie takes on Alliance's Gabriel Goulart, and while his opponent might be different, the outcome is the same. A minute and a half into the match, Clark initiates his omoplata routine after Goulart avoids a triangle submission. Moments later, he's converting that into the crucifix variant, which threatens a choke as well as Goulart's arm, and Goulart taps moments later. Clark Gracie, congratulations on your silver medal today. How are your matches? It was, uh, it was good, a fun time. Uh, got a couple of submissions in the first couple of fights. And then uh, my last match, I was uh, winning by an advantage. Then guy got the sweep. I thought I had like a minute and a half left, two minutes, and they finished the time. So I was a little bit surprised. I was waiting for the right time to get the sweep and finish the fight. But, you know, it is what it is. And they said they can't do anything about it now. So, but either way, it was a good experience, had fun. I've seen you use Doma Plata a lot in competition, and you seem to be getting, <laughs> it's no secret, but it seems to be getting sharper and sharper. Today, you finished two guys with the Oma Plata crucifix choke. Is that something you've been working on? Yeah, it's been something that, you know, I've just been seeing from all over, you know, and uh, I've been having success with it, so you know, I try to go for it when I can. It looked, from my angle, it looked like you were getting the shoulder and the choke at the same time. Is that the idea? Yeah, a lot of the time, that, that's how it works, yeah. I think the first guy might have tapped to the shoulder, the second from the choke. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Are you going to do the absolute division today? I'm thinking about it, yeah. So we'll see how it is. All right. You're always improving, Clark. It's good to see you. Follow your career. Appreciate it. Rafael Barbosa, also known as Formiga here in the Black Gi, captures the momentum and Isaias Reyes back early into this match and maintains the position until coming up on top. When Reyes later tries to prevent having his guard passed, he makes the mistake of offering Formiga his left arm and Formiga won't give it back. Formiga finally ends the matter with an arm lock for the victory. This match with Otavio Sousa and the Blue Gi is a snapshot of what's to come during the rest of the black belt action at the New York Open. Long story short, he's on fire. The instructor from Gracie Baja's flagship school in Irvine, California faces soul fighters Rafael Barbosa in this match. Sousa, who's medaled at multiple world championships, sweeps Barbosa with a quick ankle pick, just a quick stop on the way to his final destination in top mount. While Barbosa abandons his neck while trying to escape the mount, Sousa works the choke in and gets the tap. Ken Promola, here in the White Gi, has been training some form of grappling for over 20 years. He faces alliances Rafael Hosendo, who earned his own black belt all the way back in 2002. Hosendo goes for this pretty single leg takedown, but Promola scrambles out of it and the two re-engage. Later, Promola is nearly able to take Hosendo's back, but all those years of experience keep him safe and the match continues. Despite a rare headstand pass attempt from Promola, Hosendo is able to advance in the division thanks to points earned by this sweep, and the South Carolina-based instructor advances. Here, Otavio Sousa faces Alliance's Rafael Hosendo in this quarterfinal match. Hosendo is wearing the green and yellow belt. Sousa quickly positions himself in De La Hiva guard and uses it to set up a single leg. Watch closely because after the takedown, he quickly circles around the pass, and seconds later, he seizes a fast, far side wrist lock that eliminates Hosendo. Here, Otavio Sousa faces Soul Fighters athlete Formiga in this brief encounter. Again, the two begin the match with a double guard pull, and from there, Sousa begins a march toward the submission that wasn't going to be denied. He turns the pass into taking Formiga's back. Those four points will be unnecessary as he quickly sinks a deep collar choke that earns him the gold medal in the absolute division of the 2012 New York Open. Otavio Souza, double gold in your weight class and in the absolute. How's it feel? Awesome. Like today I had a great day. In the beginning of the year I got a little disappointed because I, I hurt myself so I couldn't fight the Europeans. Now I'm feeling much better than before. I'm so happy. It's hard to express how, how I feel right now. 
But I would like to dedicate this victory to all my friends that helped me like on my preparation, all the students that helped me out, and my girlfriend also that gave me all the support. And what do you want to do in the future? I just want to keep competing. Like my, my goal, main goal is like win the World Championship as a black belt. I didn't achieve this yet, but hope this year. And what's the next tournament for you? The one in Long Beach. Yeah, and after that we will be the World Championship. I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you very much, man. In the team medal standing, Henzo Gracie takes third with 113 points, Team Lloyd Irvin takes second with 159 points, and Alliance takes the gold with 270 points, making them the New York Open team champion for three years in a row. Upcoming IBJJF events include Dallas International Open, May 6th, the Long Beach Spring International Open on May 12th, the World Jiu-Jitsu Championships, broadcasting live May 31st through June 3rd, and the Las Vegas International Open on August 11th. For more information on upcoming IBJJF events, please visit ibjjf.org.